Hi everyone, welcome back to Premier State Investing. It's been a little while, so it's great to see you. I've been uh, working on a website and um, let me do the introduction, starting right off with this document. It was good for 19 shares of uh, bank stock here at a local bank back in November 1978. They went out of business and it ended up being worth zero. So let's look at uh, some financial products that help us go short on the financial services sectors. So we're gonna be looking today at a product from Direction. These are ETFs. The FAZ, it's a triple bear. You can see financial bull bear, 3X, and the daily bear goes by the ticker FAZ. A lot of times the banks have gotten caught and then bailed out. And some people, you know, definitely can make an argument the other way. No, the banks are almost untouchable. Um, they're too big to fail. These are essential institutions. And, um, but hey, they dropped huge in 08. Um, and so, you know, we'll just have to see. You have to decide if it's a, a fund or if you see a story that makes sense to you of why the financial sector would really go down. But I think the real estate story, uh, Fed coin, inflation, the ability to lend at low rates, the high capital requirements or reserves, uh, these could all be possibilities. So let's take a look at this product. So the key with these is that they're really engineered in order to be for a single day. They're going to be 3x plus or minus depending upon which ETF you buy. Um, and it's based on the benchmark for a single day. We'll look here at what benchmark they follow. Uh, but the idea is that it's not like a monthly, it resets every single day, which means they're kind of locking in their gains and losses at the end of every day. And that really causes it to be more volatile. We'll look here at their prospectus in a second. Okay, so if you come over here, you'll see the top 10 index Holdings by percent, so Berkshire, Class B, 11.68, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, Morgan Stanley. Um, so really, there's a pretty, pretty big drop off from Bank of America at 7.27% down to Citigroup at 3.68%. Then the, again, the indexes, so banks are about 40%, capital markets, 25, insurance about 20, diversified financial services, and then it really drops off after those first top four. So this has a 1.08% expense ratio. And they say here in bold, the fund does not seek to achieve its stated investment objective for a period of time different than a trading day. So it's really not a good idea. They typically suggest that you really need to monitor your accounts um, very regularly, like daily, I, I would probably say. So this is interesting. It basically says that because it resets on a day to day basis, that your results will be different if you look at a period of investing time longer than a single day. It says the fund will lose money if the index performance is flat over time. And as a result of daily rebalancing, the index is volatility and the effect of compounding. It is even possible that the fund will lose money over time while the index performance decreased over a single period longer than a single day. A graph that kind of describes what they're saying. What you have is the one year index return starting here at zero in the middle. And we're looking for this downside movement, right? If we're going to buy the bear, you'll notice that it's zero here at the negative 301 year index return. But the volatility starts to really play into the picture. So if it's flat, we're likely to lose 5%, uh, 5.8%. So say it goes, you know, up and down 10% over the course of our holding period, which is longer than a day. Um, but it ends up at the same price where we bought it. We're likely going to be down 5.8%. And you can see that in all these different red areas. These are all areas where we're going to be losing money. Notice that in all of these here, uh, the index moved in the direction that we were expecting. And yet we lost 5.7, 70%, 95%. The real idea is that anytime the volatility is really high, like, so yeah, so if we look at this 75 in fact, this is pretty extreme. Let's just go with the 50%. Say we started with $100, we're up 50%, so now we're at 150, but then we lose half of that, right? We're at 75. And then say times 1.5, we're up to 112, but then times 0.5, now we're back down to $56. If it continues to work in that fashion, times 1.5, now we're at 84, times 0.5, 42, times 1.5, we're at 63, times 0.5, now we're back to 31. You can see as I went, the whole scenario narrowed down and we we're going to be losing a lot of money just with five or six different iterations. So you can see where this volatility is a big, big, big deal. At the same time, if you are able to really kind of, I don't know, look into something, um, see something coming, a negative 
20% down move on the index. Could give you as much as an 83.9% return, positive in the green. And you can see some of these numbers are very high, 100%, 174%, 336%. So you don't have to get into all of the um, issues. Basically, instead of buying uh, a whole bunch of puts at different maturities, uh, basically that's what they're doing. And so you're holding, they're buying the puts and turning it into engineering an ETF. And then we can buy it for if we want to hold it for a week or something like that. Um, it is very volatile. Um, and it doesn't always match the like three to one movement that you're looking at. So, um, so typically volatility for a normal stock is somewhere around like 20 to 30 percent on an annualized basis. So here they say the index's annualized historical volatility rate for five year period ended December 31st, 2020 was about 23.18 percent. They said the index's highest volatility rate for any one calendar year during the five year period was 43 percent. I'm just gonna round those off. And that when they looked at the financial sectors, all those that we looked at, Citibank, Chase, Berkshire, uh, they had a average performance of going up 13.3%. So this definitely isn't a product that you would want to buy and hold for a long period of time. Like I bought these when it looked like, okay, we weren't sure who was going to be the president in the United States. It seemed very like, there was like troops and people were like dying and there was all that, you know, real problem where people couldn't, it didn't seem like that there, it was going to go to the Supreme Court or anything. So you could, you know, pick your, pick your opportunity or pick your problem. Um, but this is just a kind of an, an interesting thing to know about. Definitely read some of the information. So additionally, just for the curious, if you want to look at the one month, three month, year to date, one year, three year, five year, 10 year returns, it's all right here. So one of the advantages I see with this as opposed to getting into put options would be, you know, what if you only need to hold for a few number of days and you don't have the cash available to put up everything that you would need in order to cover your premium? You know, you can put up whatever amount of money you want in these products um, and they trade just like an ETF. So you can get in and out the same day. Um, and of course, you could sell your put option as well. But like I said, it's a little bit more manageable as far as the capital requirement on the front end. So, you know, if you have enough money to buy puts, then you could probably do that and buy it in a short term for the expiration. Um, but if that's not an option for you for whatever reason, it's something to know about. Okay, well, thanks so much. We'll talk to you guys on the next one.